Erev Tov, Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I've got some news here I've actually been working on now. Uh, it says 23 hours. I actually, I saw this originally when it first came out. Uh, this is a photograph that has been taken. It's actually taken by Gip, the very guy you see here on your screen. Let me kind of blow this up a little bit for you. Um, and I, Gip lives there in Russia from what I understand. And I traced it back to him because I wanted to see who was actually taking the picture and how can I get more information about this. What you're seeing here, and I'm going to, it's going to get pretty grainy once we get it up this big here on the screen here for you. This is a convoy. You can see one, two, at least three of these trucks right here. Uh, there is a fire truck in between there. Uh, and these trucks here are carrying nuclear warheads. This is in Russia. And they are en route uh, to a particular place. As you can see, he's writing this in Russian. And um, uh, so I actually wrote him back in Russian myself, but one of the words that I used there, he was not familiar with the word. It's okay. Uh, but I, he said, use English, which that was fine. So I said, are they transporting nuclear warheads? Uh, I saw you mentioned that, uh, that you actually took the picture. So Gip responds, obviously warheads. Uh, there are a lot of nuclear silos at this area. Nothing else there has armed guards special vehicles, etc. So he, he does confirm that it is nuclear warheads. He lives in this area here from what I understand in this. And as Gip is saying here, they're being moved there to, uh, to the facilities there where the ICBMs are actually at. Um, now this is very close to this uh, to the same place where I shared with you the other day in Western Russia there that is closer to, to the European border. Now when I say closer to the European border, it doesn't mean that it's right there on the border, uh, but um, you know, it puts it much easier within striking range, say that of uh, you know, NATO forces in Poland or NATO forces in Germany, uh, the, the, the Britain, etc., is putting all of these people in harm's way as well. And of course, Russia has been doing these things uh, because Russia is very concerned that this is going to turn into a nuclear confrontation, mainly because this is the way Russia plans this out. If Russia feels threatened to a point where it can't win a war on the ground, it will revert to nuclear weapons. Now, Russia is also threatening North Korea, by the way, uh, that if they do not stop their own threats of using a preemptive strike of nuclear weapons, Russia said that they will invade North Korea and take out everything they have. Uh, that's pretty, pretty strong rhetoric uh, right there. Not just so much rhetoric, but I think that's uh, President Putin trying to make it clear that he is really uh, destabilizing the world. And of course, with the United States already in South Korea and the U.S., bringing in a defensive missile system that has made Russia a little bit uneasy because it's not really for North Korea to either be for China or Russia. Uh, Russia is now wanting to get rid of the threat that North Korea is posing to South Korea in order to keep the, the region more stable on Russia's southeastern border there. Uh, another very concerning issue came out on Wall, the Wall Street Journal today that I picked up. UN members are proposing a bypassing of the Security Council on Syria because, you know, Russia can veto it and so could China. Uh, so now they're just going to bypass the Security Council altogether and go ahead and launch a strike on Bashar al-Assad in Syria. And that's going to take Russia in, uh, right under their, uh, their nose as well, because if you're going to take out Assad, you're going to have to take out Russia. Don't forget, as we played it the other day, uh, President, excuse me, uh, John Kerry, Secretary of State John Kerry, clearly said they'd have to take out all the defensive shields that are there in order to be able to take out Assad. That's the S-400s, S-300s. And the only way that can be done is an overwhelming amount of firepower. A little while back, we uh, brought out an article that, was, that came out in the Middle Eastern uh, news there speaking about 800 warplanes coming into Syria on a launch with 14 different nations. 
Uh, now that sounds pretty far-fetched even in my own thoughts as well, but I will say uh, it will take an overwhelming amount of firepower in order to stop the S400 or the S300 system because the only way you could do it is to be able to put in enough firepower to where they can't reload fast enough and then they would end up taking out the systems. So whether it be cruise missiles, whether it be bombers coming in, and still there is, you know, I know that there are some people that didn't believe when I brought out that Diego Garcia had really been mounting up a lot of uh, bombers there in so much that they're even being parked on the highway there near the, uh, the air runway there. Uh, but that's a top secret mission. No one's supposed to know about it. But I do have some friends that have some very good uh, capabilities of uh, confirming this for me. And yes, it is confirmed that there is a massive buildup of bombers in this region of Diego Garcia. And even though that is a long shot to get up to Syria, well, with a little bit of uh, plenty of refuelers in the area that are going on, they could easily do just that and come in through the, through the uh, southeastern side of Syria, totally unexpected across Saudi Arabia, and then uh, up into uh, uh, up to Syria through the southeastern uh, side there. Um, so anyway, it's very concerning about what the UN, what they're planning on doing there, just bypassing the Security Council on Syria altogether. Now here's what's interesting. The whole point is, is they consider that Russia and Syria has, have been causing a humanitarian crisis by killing all the civilians in the area. But what they're not telling you is, like I said before, is the same thing that happens in Ukraine. All the civilians that were being killed in Ukraine were certainly Ukrainian civilians, but on and un, un, sadly enough, they were all from the separatist side to begin with. And it was the Ukraine soldiers doing the killing of them. Well, this is pretty much the same thing going on inside of Aleppo. I don't doubt that some of the bombs that are being dropped by Syria and Russia trying to knock out these militants are also killing civilians as well because they're keeping those civilians as human shields. But you have to remember, it is the U.S.-backed rebels that are in this area as well. Well, not just Onursa, nothing like, not just this group alone. It is also the U.S. backed rebels, and I have proof here because RT released a video today, and this is Murad, uh, who actually was filming, who's filming inside of uh, Aleppo right now. And I don't know, if, uh, even the the commentator, I don't know if he caught what the man said in Arabic. It was translated properly, but did anybody actually catch it or not? I don't even know. So. I wanted to share with you. Watch what he says here. My son-in-law entered the city to rescue his brother and mother. Okay, this is during the humanitarian pause, which remember they kind of scoffed at Russia for doing an eight-hour pause. Well, now Russia thus far has paused for 24 hours, no airstrikes, and they're talking about doing it even longer. Why didn't America get involved with this and help Russia to help the humanitarian aid to put a stop to the fighting there? All the while, while there has been a pause, a cessation of, of airstrikes in Aleppo, guess who's been fighting and bombing everybody else? It's been the U.S.-backed rebels in there, not just Al Nursa. And it's also been the Belgian uh, Air Force who has bombed up there in northern Aleppo and even Turkey bombing the Kurdish people in Syria as well. I mean, nobody on the NATO coalition, no NATO member has any respect for ceasefire. Oh, they're big to talk about it. Do a ceasefire. I think it's because the U.S. just wants to rearm their militants is what they're wanting to do. And here's what the man says. He says, my son-in-law entered in the city to, uh, he entered in him to rescue his brother and his mother. But he hasn't had a chance so far to do it or to leave the city himself. Okay, why can't they leave the city? The, uh, Murad asks the question. He said, because they, the terrorists, are shooting at them. Don't let them leave. So he's going to ask them which ones. He says, who are they? Militants of the Free Syrian Army and Jahabat al-Nursa. Both of them. Remember they joined forces together? The Free Syrian Army, the U.S.-backed rebels, won't even let nobody out. Holding these people hostages. Holding them hostage against their will and using them as human shields. That's a crying shame. 
it's even more of a shame to think this is who Barack Obama backs. This is the type of thugs that he backs and calls this the liberation movement. So this is what's liberating the whole people hostage so that you can um, you know, increase your number of civilian deaths. And as he said here, they're the ones shooting at the civilians. They're the ones m dropping mortars on them. I mean, this is disgusting. When anybody tries to leave the city, they either shoot at them or beat them or torture them. My brother's daughter is in there, in the eastern part of the city. They're not allowed to leave the city. They shoot at them and throw bombs at them. They're not even allowed to leave their houses. They tried to leave many times, but all in vain. It's very difficult to live there. There's no food, no water, no electricity, no fuel. Now, they blame this on Syria and on Russia. No. This is the U.S.-backed moderate rebels and Al Nursa that cut all that supply to the people so they don't have nothing. And this is what the U.S. coalition, they back these kind of thugs. It's deplorable. As we showed you the, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the news broadcast yesterday, and I'm going to include that link to this one in this broadcast as well in the description just in case you didn't get to see it. Because let me tell you something. It's deplorable all the lies that we've been told in the West, all the lies told in Europe, all the lies told by the, the, the media puppets there in America, CNN, Fox, all these liars. That's what they are, liars. And even a German uh, group sends in a, a, an undercover uh, news journalist into RT to, to expose them. The man ended up agreeing with RT and said that they're the most honest news reporting team he'd ever seen. Backfired on you, didn't it? And then they had to admit that the Germans are the ones that are the puppets to their government. What a disgrace. Anyway, continuing on with our story here. Aleppo's humanitarian pause. Militants launch mortar attacks on civilians, according to Sputnik News here. The first day of the humanitarian pause, the Syrian Aleppo did not lead to any desired results following the halt in the airstrikes. The terrorists in turn responded with mortar fire in the humanitarian corridors. Eight corridors. They started bombing everybody that's trying to get out. So only ten people got out. Ten people. It is totally deplorable. This here is what I was talking about earlier about the, uh, the Turkish jet there that uh, bombed the Kurds. Uh, and the Syrian government says a flagrant violation. Uh, Damascus has re reacted harshly to the bombing of the Kurdish militants in northern Syria on Thursday morning by Turkey's air force, vowing to intervene next time Ankara sends in its planes over its borders. In a statement, the Syrian Defense Ministry accused the Turkish of flagrant aggression with the targeted innocent citizens, saying that it considers it a dangerous development that could escalate the situation. The only, the only way that Bashar al-Assad could intervene is if Russia gets their back. Because if he goes to uh, attacking uh, uh, Turkish aircraft, it's going to bring all NATO in on top of him. And that's, I think this is exactly what uh, the U.S. Uh, Obama administration really would like. They'd love to see one of these NATO jets get knocked down. I think that's why Belgium has gone in there and fired, uh, you know, popped off a few bombs and killed some people. Now they send the Turkish in there to drop off a few bombs and kill somebody. Does not anybody see what's going on? Do you not realize that NATO is intentionally sending in their people, wanting Russia to lock on with one of these S-300s, S-400 systems there and pop one of their planes out of the air so they can justify now, forget the humanitarian mission, we're going in now. And do you know that they also, uh, they, you know, all this big talk about, oh, Assad and, and, and Russia are using phosphoric weapons on the, 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 the civilians here inside of Syria. Did you know that the U.S. just got busted again for using phosphorus weapons over in Mosul? Hmm. Oh, I get it. It's a smoke screen, right? ridiculous. 
InfoWars has put out an article here by Paul, jo Paul Joseph Watson. Top, uh, top British Journal warns of nuclear war with Russia. The end of life as we know it. Senior British Army officer, former Deputy Supreme called Commander, Europe General Sir Richard Sheriff warns that NATO forces nuclear war with Russia is uh, in Europe and America is already technically at war with Russia. We've been saying this all along. It's a proxy. It's just a matter of who, which thugs they're using. I, I, don't, don't, guys, I, I've not forgot about the Gog and Magog. I will get to this, and I am going to bring it out, and I'm going to show you what, who Gog really is, and it's going to blow you away when you find out. I'm going to back it up for you by prophetic scriptures and show you the facts there, and you're going to find out who that thug really is. Remember, it has no regard for human life whatsoever. And look what, look what America is using right now. Look at Obama, what he's using. He's using a bunch of thugs over there in the Middle East. These, and most of these guys are not from Syria. They're from all these different warring nations, the ISIS, part of the ISIS members. You know, they just cross lines. Still the same people, still the same ruthless people have no regard for life. It's not Russians. Do you know, have you ever looked at Russian people? I mean, the Russian people look like American people for the most part. Unless you get to the Far East, then you look more like the Japanese people. Do you not realize they're... You know, human beings are human beings. And it's just sad what's going on in this, this whole conflict here. And yet, what is Obama doing? Obama is taking the ruthless, most murderous group that he possibly can. And that's who's fighting the wars now. And they're paying them to do it. You know why? Because they can pay them, uh, like an American soldier's salary, a little bit less, and they get the same results without a bunch of Americans being killed in the war. And then only send in some special forces when you need it. That's why the Obama administration changed the entire scope of the war. Now they just use paid mercenaries to do all this fighting. What a shame. What a shame. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And the general is right, though. As you can see by this photo right here, Russia's not playing games either. And I don't think Russia wants to do a first strike on anything, but Russia does know if they get into any kind of conflict in Syria, if the United States strikes any of the coalition, if, if Russia takes down one of these planes that's coming in, or Syria takes down one of the planes, if Syria does it, believe me, the whole NATO coalition is coming in. And I think this is the provocation. They're trying to draw them in. Trying to draw them in in order to bring in this entire war here. It's only a matter of time. It's going to happen. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.